we're going to bring you a short story of a cold case murder. A murder that's not been solved for almost 70 years since the recording of this video. Now just behind me is the crematorium and to me this area is quite secluded, a bit out of the way but you can still see evidence of people coming here and paying their respects. Now the purpose of this video is to actually bring some of these unsolved murders to the forefront, pay our respects and maybe shed a bit of light to any new evidence, although we are talking 70 odd years or sometimes longer. Let's go and meet Mark at Garnet Street, which is about three miles away from here. And he'll give you the backdrop of the story. And we'll come back to this Garden of Rest and pay our respects where the victim's ashes are laid. This is Garnet Street and it's situated near the bottom of Leeds Road, which you can see behind me way down there. And this street was the scene of a murder back in 1955, a murder which remains unsolved to this day. As you can see, it's quite an industrialised area. Lots of businesses are here. But back in 1955, it was an area that still had residential houses and shops, although quite a bit of the area had been demolished and the residents had moved on to other parts of Bradford. These window frames more or less mark the position of some premises, which was a shop at 124 Garnet Street and the proprietor was a Mrs. Francis Hodgson, aged 67. Francis Hodgson lived on Undercliff Street, which was just around the corner from where the shop was. Now we're actually at the top part of Undercliff Street and this is the only section that still survives because if you pan the camera just down that way you'll notice that the area has been subdivided in more recent years by new houses and what have you. This actually used to stretch all the way down to Barker End Road in a very very long and steep thoroughfare. Mrs Hodgson came to Bradford in 1911. She was the daughter of a former Lord Mayor of Stockton on Tees. She met a man called Bertram Hodgson who she married in 1914 and he owned quite a few shops in the area including a grocer's on Uncliffe Street. So to set the scene it's Thursday the 31st of March 1955. We're on the corner of Garnet Street and Anderson Street and on this little street there lived a girl aged eight years old called Georgina Mitchell. And it was about half four that afternoon she left her home she came round this corner and she was making her way to Mrs Hodgson's shop. And when she entered, she noticed there was a gentleman in there talking to Mrs Hodgson, although the little girl said she couldn't quite hear the conversation. But anyway, the fella said to the little girl, you know, you go ahead, buy what you need to buy. And so that's what the little girl did. After Georgina left the shop, and at about 4.45, two ladies entered Mrs Hodgson's premises, and they are reportedly the last two people to have seen Mrs Hodgson still alive. A little time after that, at around five o'clock, another local child, Eileen Romans, who was 14, who lived a little further up Garnet Street, she came into the shop where she found Mrs Hodgson laid on the floor in a pool of blood. Mrs Hodgson was still alive, so when the police came, they investigated the scene, and Mrs Hodgson was transported to Bradford Royal Infirmary. Frances Hodgson had come out from behind the counter and she was found on the floor with her head facing the door. She'd been struck on the head with a bottle and there was actually an empty smashed vinegar bottle found on the floor of the shop and she'd also received knife wounds to her head and to her back. It was obvious that she'd put up something of a struggle during the attack. Whilst at the infirmary, she remained unconscious and a policewoman stayed with her but sadly, Mrs. Hodgson died the following day. Georgina Mitchell, the little girl who'd seen the man talking to Mrs. Hodgson in the shop, gave the police the following description. 
It was aged 28 to 30 years, 5 foot 10 in height, very thin, sallow face, high cheekbones, very slim build, wearing a Trilby hat. During her post-mortem, it was established that she died from hypostatic bronchial pneumonia following a fracture of the skull and stab wounds to the right side. There was also extensive injuries to the left hand and wounds to the right side. A thousand people were questioned during the murder hunt, but not one person was able to direct the police towards the murderer. Nearly two weeks after the attack, there was another appeal in the pages of the Telegraph and Argus where an artist's impression was published. Have you seen the thin man? And it wasn't exactly the most striking photo fit. It could have been anybody. A little further up Garnet Street, just beyond the junction with Anderson Street, there was another shop, a grocer's, and that was situated at 132 Garnet Street, which was just behind me. And the owner of that shop was a Mr Johnson, and he told the police that the day before the attack, a man had come into the shop and demanded that he should be given one pound because he was hungry. A little bit of an odd thing, but the shopkeeper told the guy to get out, and that was the end of that but he was another potential suspect. The police investigation appeared to be drawing blanks really in relation to the man who'd been seen in the shop at half past four by little Georgina Mitchell. And there was various appeals in the Telegraph and Argus for people to come forward. There was a rag and bone man, for example, that had been seen in the area around that time, but he was never located. The following day, a little boy had told another girl that he'd seen a man coming up Garnet Street with red marks on his jacket. Again, he was never located. And it got a little desperate, I suppose, because there was even a request from the TNA pages for two women that had been seen looking at a murder notice at a shop on Leeds Road to come forward. The Telegraph and Argus reported on the funeral of Mrs. Francis Hodgson. They said, Detectives watched from a distance as the funeral cortege moved into the chapel at Schoolmore Cemetery today. Between 25 and 30 of Mrs. Hodgson's friends and customers from the Garnet Street area also attended. Many flowers were sent for the funeral by complete strangers whose sympathy had been aroused by the tragedy. The large mass of blooms lay outside the chapel after the service, before cremation began. The ashes of Mrs Francis Hodgson, aged 67, were brought here to the Garden of Rest at Schoolmore Cemetery. And they were placed in this, in this tiny vault, alongside the ashes of her husband, Bertram. As I said at the start of this video, it's a murder case that still remains unsolved almost 70 years later. Whether or not Francis will be given the justice she deserves, I think that's highly unlikely now. But remember Francis today and rest in peace.